Can Genshin Impact become an esport? Short answer, no, but the prospect is certainly something worth talking about. Around a week ago, the Genshin Impact University Invitational UK was announced, hosted by Jinx TV, a United Kingdom based media group that specializes in esports. It is of note that the event is officially endorsed by Genshin Impact, as it was tweeted out by their official account. And while the event is going to happen later this month, on May 28th, 2022, their event page explains a lot about the logistics of how the event is actually going to work. Though to be honest, some of it is a bit confusing, so I do apologize if I happen to misinterpret anything. Let's start off with a thing you're probably wondering most about. How can a game without any kind of real versus mode be played competitively? Well, in the University Invitational, there are four different challenges, with the first being called Level Up. One person from the team of three plays as the Traveler and one higher level character. The objective is to use any strategy to level up the Traveler, and after 20 minutes, players are ranked by how much EXP was accumulated. It's noted that players are not allowed to spend real money and will have no EXP or Primo gems on the account to start with. Challenge 2 is a collection challenge, where all three players, each in separate worlds, have to collect items on the list from the wild. Each one is worth a certain number of points with rare objects being valued higher, and only one item of each type will be counted per team. There are no restrictions on starting points or the use of teleports, and after 15 minutes the point totals are tallied. Challenge 3 is Kaya vs Amber, where two players from each team go head to head, as opposed to the previous free for all games. One player from each team is on Amber, and the other is on Kaya. The Kaya player will try to build an ice bridge across some body of water, and the Amber players have to melt the bridge to stop them. Swimming is not allowed, so whichever team makes it across first, or whoever gets the farthest in 20 minutes if neither makes it, is the winner. And lastly, Challenge 4 is a boss rush. All three team members join the same world using special accounts that are at Adventure Rank 60, have the full map unlocked, and have all characters at level 90, talents at max level, with all constellations available, have all weapons at level 90, and have one of each artifact set. There are a bunch of rules, but besides not being able to use any stat enhancing food, you get the idea. The boss rush will be done in a single 30 minute segment, featuring a list which totals to 5 war bosses and 3 weekly bosses. Teams that succeed in defeating all 8 within the time frame can get extra points for how fast they were relative to other teams. Now that we know all that, let's see how the competition itself is structured. Applications are open online, and the top 4 voted teams from the 9 designated universities each play in a separate qualifier. All teams play the collection challenge, and then the top 2 play the boss rush challenge to decide the team which will represent that university. The social team, which can be from any school not in the 9, doesn't have a qualifier because the most voted team simply makes it to the finals. In the live finals, all 10 teams play level up and Kaya vs Amber, and the top 3 teams move on to the grand finals. The finalists will play collection and boss battle, and the total points determines who gets first, second, and third place. The champion team gets 5,000 pounds total and 2,000 primo gems for each team member. The second place team gets 3,000 pounds and 1,000 primo gems each. The third place team gets 2,000 pounds and 500 primo gems each. And there's a popularity award of 1,000 pounds and 600 primo gems each to the team that gets the most total votes. All other finalist teams get 500 primo gems each and they're also throwing in some merch too. Just from hearing all that, it's abundantly clear that everything has been very carefully planned out for this event, so I want to start off by first acknowledging that. They took an extremely casual game with no competitive mode, and are going to make a fun, exciting event out of it. But the topic of this video is a bit larger in scope, as we want to know if Genshin would make for a legitimate esport. So I've decided on 5 things which I generally find to be integral to a successful esports game, and we'll see how Genshin stacks up. Note, I cannot predict the future, so of course this is all speculation. The first and most important thing about esports is that, like regular sports, it's exciting to watch because competitors put in the hours to climb higher towards the game's skill ceiling much more than what a majority of players will do. With these games in Genshin, are there opportunities for skill expression? Well, I'd say yeah. From what I can tell, teams that go into the challenges with clear plans based on strong game knowledge and those who can execute those plans well are going to easily beat underprepared teams. Especially with multiple players having to work in tandem, I feel like there's going to be a lot of opportunities for small improvements to be made to distinguish the teams who have really done their practice. Another advantage Genshin has is its low skill floor. 
because it means that even the most casual players will be able to have a basic understanding of what the strategies are. So what this all means is that fundamentally, the games do work for a competitive setting, but it's the rest of the factors which pose more of a problem. One of the defining traits that esports generally has over traditional sports is a rapidly evolving metagame. Of course, this is due to the regular updates that most competitive games receive, whether it be new characters, adjustments to old characters, or changes to entire system mechanics, players will always have something new to experiment with or learn. As opposed to the last point, this one is more about longevity. Although there are instances of competitive games that have succeeded with sparse or even no updates post-launch, those games have exceptionally high skill ceilings due to their high demand of precise inputs. While Genshin does have some opportunity for advanced techniques and will get updates in the form of new characters, I just can't help but feel like the game would hit a wall if it were continuously played competitively. Like, each game would be solved and then there would be no reason to try other strategies. Although some of the mini games can be changed up and new ones can be introduced, I don't really see that much long-term potential. Next thing is that two of the four games are dependent on having provided accounts. Not everyone is going to have a character which they can level up, and obviously for the boss rush you can never expect every person to have every character at max level. Of course, for this event specifically, it is a good thing that they are providing accounts as it makes for one unique challenge and makes the other one not pay to win. The first problem with this, however, is that it makes these games more difficult to practice. We all agree that teams that practice the most and the most effectively should theoretically be the winners, right? For leveling up, I guess it's only a minor inconvenience that you have to manually total your EXP gains, but for the boss rush, it's a definite concern for me. Unless these players are given full access to these boosted accounts, which I find to be very unlikely, it's going to be significantly more difficult to lab which characters and weapons to use. I'm not doubting that the players will know which characters are strong and which weapons synergize with them, but characters will be at Constellation 6, so preconceived information may not completely translate accurately to the real competition. The accounts also pose an issue in there being no chance for community tournaments, where most esports communities grow and where players can get the best practice. Fourth is a lack of spectator tools. Obviously, I want to reserve judgment until we see how the production actually turns out, but bad spectating can make an exciting game boring to watch. And if the feed is just constantly flipping through various player perspectives or an in-game cameraman watching other players, viewers might not feel very engaged. Another key aspect of esports is the investors. Running a tournament is very expensive. The venue, internet, gaming equipment, production, prizes, and marketing are just some of the many expenses involved. A big way to help handle these is by having sponsors help pay for them. But of course, getting them on board is dependent on these kinds of events promising high viewership. Again, this is speculative since the event hasn't happened yet, but I imagine this event won't necessarily be bringing Genshin to the top games on Twitch. I want to make clear that I'm not trying to be negative towards the University Invitational, because again, I think it's really cool that they're doing something like this. And I'm sure when people are saying Genshin Esports, most of them are just joking but I wanted to seriously consider if it would be possible. There certainly are other games that aren't competitively oriented that have growing competitive communities, but it really just doesn't seem to be a likely future for Genshin specifically. I hope you found this video to be interesting or insightful, and as always, thanks for watching.